It's hard to describe the Trident if you haven't had the chance to experience the course. I've tried to start my recent race recaps by jumping right into the race, but I think this race needs some additional information to be fully understood and really appreciated. The course is located at the Jupiter Ridge Natural Area and is a 3.3-ish mile loop which resembles a Trident. For each half marathon, four loops must be traversed. For the marathon, eight, and for the Ridge to Nowhere, 12. For the Trident, there's a number of options to choose from depending on your level of crazy. The Marathon de las Muertes is two half marathons, the first beginning at noon with a cutoff time of four hours, ending at 4 p.m. The second half marathon begins at 8 p.m., having the same four hour cutoff and ending at 12 a.m. Total time for the marathon is determined by summing the runner's time for both halves. If runners don't feel like running a marathon, they still can choose to run either the daytime half or the nighttime half. I'd recommend running the day version if you're a masochist, and I'd recommend the night version if you're a masochist who likes to suffer under the cover of darkness. Finally, we have the Ridge to Nowhere. It's a new event to this year's Trident series, and I would say it's easily one of the most sadistic events I've ever encountered. But I'll be saving that summary for later in the video, because I need to give you a reason to continue watching and hopefully trick you into hitting that subscribe button and maybe giving that like button a hit too. The biggest challenge for me when discussing the Trident is probably conveying the difficulty of the 3.3 mile loop. After some thought though, I think I can summarize this by three main factors. One being the heat, two being the sand, and finally the third would be the expectation for the course. The heat is easy to explain. With the noon start time and the peak of summer, this race will be hot, humid, and there's a really good chance the air will be stagnant. There are four aid stations, one at the start and finish, and one at each of the three trident prongs. This may seem excessive, but I've had a bandana full of ice completely melt by the time I traveled the half mile between prongs, so the heat is absolutely no joke. While some runners do have the speed and the fitness to skip some or all of the aid stations, most runners will need to utilize the aid stations to battle overheating and dehydration, if anything just for a stop for some extra ice. For instance, I was carrying two 16 ounce bottles, but I probably stopped every other aid station, uh, if not for a water refill, to pack my bandana with ice and to get some cold water dripped on my head because it was just so hot out there. The sand is slightly more difficult to explain. Running in the sand is tough, but running over the sand dunes of the Trident is a completely different story. I'm not sure the exact elevation gain and loss, but my watch measured it somewhere around 213 feet for each lap. This gives around 850 feet for a half marathon, and 1700 for a full. Now, <laughs> the sand is really tough, and going uphill is tough, but adding the two together cannot be measured on a linear scale. It's, it instead becomes exponentially more difficult, and unless you've really experienced running up a sand dune, especially running up a sand dune for 13 miles, it's really hard to put into words how difficult not only the climbing, but the descent can be. Finally, I think the hardest part to explain is the expectation one puts on themselves for this course. There's really no past experience that can be used, aside from previously running the Trident, to gauge where your performance is going to be. The first lap is really just a taste of what to expect, and even the dunes seem to be just a minor obstacle during this first 3.3 miles. The second lap, though, is where the doubt starts to set in. Those dunes can start to become taller, the sand seems to become a little bit softer. By lap 3, you've pretty much thrown your pacing plan away, and by lap 4, you just want to survive. Last year is my first year running the Trident, and not until I was on the course, drenched in sweat, muscles aching, out of breath, and staring at an average pace of about 3-4 to four minutes slower than my average half marathon time, did it really sink in what I had gotten myself into. And that was only the first half marathon. So with that summary, I hope you can watch this race recap with a bit more appreciation of the difficulty the runners faced on this beautiful, brutal summer day in Jupiter, Florida. I'm going to take you on a trip with me while I run the marathon version, but I also have a lot of good footage of the runners that were running the Ridge to Nowhere, and during the interlude of my half marathons, I'm going to go over the Ridge to Nowhere a bit more, because as I mentioned, this is truly a sadistic event, and if I'm brave enough, an event that I may hope to take on next year. <laughs> Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh!
Got about 0.4 miles in. Feels like a lot more so far, but yeah, starting off quick and hopefully gonna keep quick. Oh, come on. Super hot out, but this is what I train for, so I gotta get at it. I'll check back in later. Hopefully, I'm not uh, completely drained from the heat. We got an aid station. Nah. No that. weekends off. No aid station stops. I gotta win. <laughs> I'm gonna do an aid station stop in a little bit though. <laughs> No, our camera didn't happen. The mistake. On to loop two at 3.84 miles in 36 minutes, 36 seconds. Just trying to keep running, keep a good pace. How you doing? Go. Thank you. Yeah. It's hot though, so I want to, you know, pump the brakes a bit. I'm doing pretty good pacing myself, but this heat out here catches up to you. So. Uh, currently, I'm uh, currently doing well. I think I'm in first place, but I mean it's only the second second loop, so that could change very quickly. But I'm gonna try to keep it up. I'll check in a bit later. Thank you. Uh, some some water on my head. Where is it? Which one's straight water? There's no dog. Oh, just dump, just dump it real quick. Yep. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. Woo, refreshing. Ooh, that's refreshing. All right. Uh, here we go. Where are we at now? 4.52 miles and whatever. Just moving. Just moving. Feeling still pretty good. And I'm going to keep it up. Oh, these people are crazy. You guys are crazy. I don't think they were in a very good mood. They're calming up that big sand dune, so. I <laughs> don't think they were too happy about that. Almost done with the loop two, on the loop three. Ooh. Loop two complete. About seven miles in, uh, seven miles on the dot in. An hour and 11 minutes, 
doing good. A bit slower than I want it to be, but I'm keeping a good pace still out in front. So I wanna do loop three, nice and steady. Maybe the uh, final couple prongs of loop four turn up a bit, but it's hot and uh, talking's getting kind of winded. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this one short and uh, check it when anything exciting happens. Three done. One more. Just hit mile 12. I made sure go a little over two hours. And yes, yeah, the final final prong. It's hot. Well, cool down it. a little bit. Thank you, sir. Cool down a little bit, but I gotta finish strong. Second place right now and gonna focus on running. Give it up. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, man. Good job. Woo. Man, good oh, last loop, man. You kept me motivated. Woo. In a little over two hours and 15 minutes, my first half marathon was complete. I came in second by a few minutes, which meant that to get first place overall, I'd have to finish faster than the runner who came in first. Compared to last year, I was feeling amazing, and I had very high hopes for the second half. I'm going to take this interlude to explain the Ridge to Nowhere 12 hour race. Every hour for 12 hours, starting at noon, runners must run a single lap on the Trident course, which is 3.3 miles as mentioned. Once the loop is completed, Runners must wait until the next hour to begin again. Upon completion, individual lap times are tallied and the winner is determined by the fastest total time. Additionally, every other hour, starting with the second lap, the last finisher of the lap is eliminated. I'm going to emphasize finisher here. If someone quit mid lap or did not return within the hour before the next lap, that is not a finisher. A finisher is someone who started on the top of the hour, traversed the whole course, and finish before the 60 minute time limit. This means that on six occasions, a runner finished the lap and found out they would not be continuing on to the next round. This is especially painful when you realize that the last lap was an elimination round, so there was a runner who was out all day, ran every single loop, finished their last lap, but still went home with a DNF. Absolutely brutal, but it's what they signed up for. The DNF rate for this race was extremely high at 65%, seeing 15 runners finish out of the 43 that began the race. On many rounds, runners finished with minutes to spare and couldn't continue on to the next round. As you can see here during the eighth loop, which marks the full marathon, two runners finished right before the cutoff with the last having 45 seconds to spare. Both of these runners did not continue, but I found their determination to finish the loop incredible because they had to have known they weren't going to continue any further, but still wanted to make sure they ended the race strong. So now that you understand the ridge to nowhere, it's time to finish my marathon. The footage for the second half is dim and shaky due to my GoPro struggling in low light conditions, and some footage is so dark that it's unusable, so I'll be keeping the audio and splicing in some footage from earlier in the race, and I do apologize for this. Nine, eight, Gina Donato, seven, six, ten time five, women's champion. Four, three, two, one. Yes, yes, yes. Go. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh man. Good night, here? Thank you for sharing some miles with us. Yeah man, thank you. I enjoyed it. I'll love to link up on the lap later somehow. Uh, we'll see. Yeah man. Woo! See ya. Yeah. Woo! One lap down. We're going back out. We got loop two of the second half. Uh, loop one. I uh, shared some miles with uh, some other runners, so I kept a real high pace, so I didn't even chance both the camera too much because we're making really good time. Uh, but yeah, feeling good. Definitely easier at night. So I want to keep pushing a hard pace and kick some ass. So I'll check in, hopefully uh, get some footage while there's still some light. Hey, right. about. 56 minutes in, forgot to start my stupid ass watch. So, not sure how far, it's the, on the way back from the third prong of the second loop. So, I'll edit that in later. But, whew, going hard. I think I got a pretty secure second place, but I just wanna secure that guy in first is flying, but I will see, let's see if I can catch him, but I'm just gonna keep pushing hard, so. Catch you later. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't capture any footage during loop three because I was focused entirely on keeping a good pace. I was starting to feel sore and my legs seemed like they wanted to walk up. I didn't expect this because last year the night half was way easier than the day half. I can only assume that this year I was better heat trained and was able to expend more muscular energy during the first half, wearing me down physically more for the night half. I had some invasive thoughts about slowing down and sliding into an easy third place, but I let those thoughts come and go and pushed on. I've learned through yoga and meditation that instead of fighting invasive thoughts like this, it's better to accept them, acknowledge them, and let them go, as if blown away by a breeze. Now that I've gotten all soft and spiritual on you, let's get back to the race. One more. I think a little more than a mile left. Feeling super tired. Hey, how you doing? Uh, feeling pretty tired, but surviving. Uh, I'm gonna try to finish out strong. Ooh, it's real, it's, uh, this night one's been tough. I st I've been running it hard, so can't wait to finish this bad boy up. On that final stretch, baby. That one, that last uh, big sand dune to go down and then that's home free. I'm hurting right now. I started off this, this second half way too fast, but here it is, we're bringing it home. Summer Slam 2022 about to be complete. I'll catch you at the finish line. Woo! Oh, come on, come on, calf. Uh, oh, 
Thank you. Oh, wait, I can't. I can't. Okay, finished. Second place overall. Kind of feel like shit. Oh, cramp it up. Oh, but couldn't be happier. That was a good, uh, good ending to the Summer Slam. Uh, oh, this is, this is live right now. I'm not feeling good. Oh, it's these ab cramps in the back cramps. I can get an ab cramp, I'm getting a back cramp. But, uh, man, just so happy I got to uh, participate and finish all the races. 100 miler, 18 miler, and then this, uh, this 26.2. So, awesome summer. Very happy with it. And uh, yeah, next up is Georgia Jewel in a few months. So gonna take a brief, uh, brief week off and then get back to training. Directly post-race, I'm usually feeling kind of neutral. I'm never really excited for finishing. Rather, I'm in high alert mode, focusing on tending to aches, dealing with cramps, and figuring out how quickly I can find a shower and a warm bed. The excitement of finishing comes later, after I'm cozy, fed, and have a moment to reflect on my accomplishments. For the Trident, this was not the case, and I was elated as I thought back to the three races I had completed in 14 days. I had completed the Summer Slam and ended it not by limping to the finish line, but by earning a podium finish. I can't wait to dive into detail about these three amazing races that made up the Summer Slam, but for now, I'm gonna end this video and I give you my thanks for watching.